Hi, it's Joey here from Day Job Hacks. In today's video, I wanna talk about passive income, how to make passive income online and offline, and the truth about passive income online. Okay, so several years ago, I actually worked two jobs. I spent roughly 60 hours a week at work and I was trading my time for money. This is what we call active income. So basically, I have to be active in order to make money. So there's lots of things out there. There's, there's businesses that actually are active income. So people think they're building a business, but they're really building a job because they have to actively engage to make that money, okay? So there's, there's a difference between active income and passive income. And in this video, I wanna talk about passive income, some of the myths going around online about online passive income, and I'm also gonna talk about some offline passive income. So basically, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use the Wikipedia description of what passive income is, and let me just read that, because I have it right here. Passive income is income that requires little to no effort to earn and maintain. It's called progressive passive income when the earner expends little to grow the income, okay? Examples of passive income include rental income and any business activities in which the earner does not materially participate. Um, some jurisdictions, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff, okay? So we're gonna use that it takes little to no effort to maintain, okay? But in order to get to that level, you obviously have to put a lot of work in or you have to have a lot of cash, okay? So in today's video, I wanna talk about some offline examples of that as well as online and these are examples that I'm involved in uh, both online and offline so I thought it'd be a great video to do because back when I was looking for options to get out of the active income into a more passive approach I realized that there wasn't a lot of information out there and I thought maybe this video would help in terms of for what I need to do in Canada here where I'm at in terms of generating some more revenue streams um, so that I can not have, have to constantly trade my time for money. Now, of course, I'm still active. I'm doing videos right now on YouTube. Uh, I make money online. I'm actively engaged. I do have active income. It doesn't mean I have to eliminate my active income or I don't have to quit my job or whatever, that kind of stuff. Passive income is just additional revenue, additional income coming in that I get, okay? And so that is the thing here. And um, I'm not trying to convince people to quit their jobs. This isn't a video about, you know, saying this is the best thing ever and I'm, try I'm not trying to sell you anything here, okay? So that's the, that's the key here to understand. So hopefully I wanna, I wanna help people by showing this passive income um, strategy that I use and some of the truth about online passive income, okay? And if it helps, great. Please subscribe below, add your comments, questions, all that kind of stuff. Um, please engage with my videos. That helps me to build the YouTube channel. So on that note, let's go to offline passive income, okay? Um, now I'm not talking residual income. I'm not talking recurring income. I'm talking just passive where you know you, you put in a little effort up front and then you maintain it over the time. So there's levels of that passivity, we'll say, or whatever word I'm looking for. Either you're really passive or you're kind of passive. To me, it doesn't matter. Um, less hours is what I'm looking for to work. So let's do a typical, typical example first of what the average person earns. And I did some math before this video, so I'm gonna look at my notes here because I did some really um, good numbers I thought I could actually share in terms of passive income versus you know your active income. So the first one I wanna talk about is, you know, real estate, okay? We all hear about real estate and people, you know, I, I talk to people on a daily basis. Some people are saying, ah, oh, I would never get into that. It's too much work. And you know, then I have people that are like, yeah, this is, this is awesome, I love it, okay? So first of all, let's talk about what it takes to earn the average amount of money for every person in, we'll say, North America, okay? So I did some research and in Canada and the US, there's a, there's a big difference between the average hourly wage. So I've decided to just kind of mesh them together. So in US the, the average hourly wage at this time on Google is $26 US and the average hourly wage for a person in Canada is a roughly 18 Canadian dollars so you can see it's much less so I've just decided to go with $20 an hour as the average active wage you know you go to work you make 20 bucks an hour on average okay so with that in mind 20 hours times or sorry 40 hours times 20 per week makes up roughly 800 bucks 
and times that by 52 weeks, you're looking at $41,600 a year in active income. So you have to go to work for that many hours, you know, and then you make 41,600. This, I'm not talking about taxes and all that other stuff. We're just going easy here, okay? So you have $41,600 in active income. So if you wanted to replace that, active income, which is pretty much how much active income I had at the time when I left the government, okay? I was roughly making around 42, 45,000 a year in uh, actively going to work every single day. So how did I replace that? How can I replace that, right? Um, so that works out to roughly $3,466 per month. First, let's talk about savings. If you just wanna go with a completely passive income, so you're not really doing anything, you're just using cash that you have right now to replace your $41,600 in yearly revenue, you would need to put your, in, your, your money into a savings account or an investment, okay? So I went with a very generous percentage and said, okay, let's assume you had enough cash to put into a savings account and the savings account was paying you 2.5% back per year. Now I did some research, there are some savings accounts that do pay that, there's some that might make a little tiny bit more and there's some that make a lot less, okay? So 2.5 I thought was very generous. So a 2.5 return on your cash, to get 41,600 uh, a year, you would need 1.664 million, okay? So $1,664,000 in cash into a 2.5 return will give you your passive income of $41,600 per year. Of course, you'd have to pay tax on that unless you're in Canada and you have a tax-free savings account and you put your 1.6 million in there and you make your money through different investments, okay, that generate you 2.5% at least per year. Now, there's a possibility that you're gonna make a lot more than that in your investments, but this is very, very conservative. So, most people don't have $1.6 million to just go toss into a bank account and start making money. So, that is what I was in, I was in that position, okay, well, there's no way in heck I'm gonna actually have 1.6 million, so I need to figure out another way to make some income without a lot of money, so I decided to leverage the banks, okay? And that is done through real estate, for me at least, okay? So I leveraged the bank, and the first thing I did was I got a house, okay? So I was able to generate enough income through my online stuff uh, in additional revenue, okay? This wasn't passive, it wasn't autopilot, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. It wasn't, all, you know, all these gimmicks and pro uh, methods, okay? It was, it's just real, you know, hard work online. I'm gonna talk about that in a second, like I said. But I was able to generate roughly 15,000 in extra cash that I could go to the bank with and say, look, I've been paying all my bills, I would like to buy a home. Okay, and when I bought that home, I made sure that it had a an apartment in the bottom so that I could make money by renting the basement to another person, okay? So that person actually was paying my mortgage while I lived in this house for free, so the money that I earned from that, I would put into a savings account, start earning money, and this is how it starts, okay? You start small, and with real estate, you can actually start building really quickly. Over three to five years, you can have a very nice portfolio of rental properties just by leveraging the bank, paying your bills, making sure that you you know choose to you know start small, and if you have if you have no money, and you just use the power of leverage and using down payments. So instead of 1.6 million to make my 41.6, I decided to go into real estate and up till now I have eight units. So I did the math, I have eight units currently and all of the math that I've done, each unit roughly makes $195 on average in cash flow, okay? So that right now works out to $1,564 per month, okay? So now to get to the 34.66 a month, which we calculated over here, I would need to have 9.75 more units, okay? So that would give me roughly um, 18 units. 18 units at a cash flow of 195 each um, would give me my 41,600 in technically passive income. Now obviously real estate is gonna be not as passive as an investment into a bank account, but again, I have people that go and they, you know, um, do the driveway, they shovel all the snow. In Canada, we have lots of snow in the winter, so there's somebody doing that for me. There's somebody doing the, uh, the yard work. Um, if something breaks, you know, I call the plumber or I call the electrician 
all of that stuff. So it, to me, I mean, that extra work is not gonna be nearly the amount of hours that it takes to actually go to work every day, wake up in the morning, drive to work, and trade 40 hours a week. To me, uh, for, for eight units, and I'm guessing once I get to 18 units, that the amount of time I actually spend would be no more than five to 10 hours a week, and that is actually way too much. I'm, I'm guessing like five hours a week of my time would probably be what I spend just to maintain that 41.6 per year through a real estate investments, okay? Now, there's a whole bunch of other things, obviously, there's the equity, there's the taxes and all that stuff, but this is just the revenue replacing revenue, okay? So, passive replacing active. So, when I did the math and I figured out how much cash I actually used in order to get to where I'm at now, um, I realized that I only spent 250,000 of my own cash in down payments, okay? Which means that compared, uh, if I was to double this, which I need to do to get to my 18 units, I would can, you know, roughly say that I'm gonna have to spend about 500 to 600,000 in cash to get to the return of 41,600 per year. Okay, now, Obviously, that is a lot less than the 1.6 million in cash that I would need to go into another investment that I described earlier. And there are some other benefits to owning real estate in terms of tax breaks and all that kind of stuff. So factoring those two things, I think real estate is better than just putting your cash into a savings account. However, some people just are at the age or they're at the, you know, the life ambition level where they just don't want to do anything. So if you have the cash, obviously, the savings account is the better option or the investment strategy. So now, those are my two favorite, you know, passive offline um, investments. Now there's one more that's kind of being passed as a passive income business, okay? Now, talking about business in, in per se, like building a business, building a store, um, let's say, and you know, you sell stuff out of your store, that is not a passive income business, okay? That is a business that requires you to show up at your work every day and sell whatever you're selling, okay? So this is the difference between passive businesses and, you know, active businesses. But there is, there is one business model that was um, pitched to me a few times, and I was interested at the time, but I realized it just wasn't a business for me, but it is called network marketing. Now, network marketing, uh, for those of you that don't know, is a type of business where you sign up and you're selling a product, and normally it starts by you trying selling it to, or you're trying to sell it to your warm markets, or your family and friends, and you say, look, I've got this great business opportunity for you, um, and the more people you get to sign up, the more, uh, revenue the company is making because they have to sign up and pay a monthly fee so you're actually earning revenue by these people joining under you okay so it's a network marketing and it just keeps getting bigger and this is the theory that as you, as you build it it gets bigger and now this is a business model that works I know it for a fact because I have family that actually makes a lot of money doing it okay but however it's just one of those businesses that to me is not passive, it's a, you have to be very aggressive, people join and then they leave, so you have to make sure if you wanna maintain your income, that you need to constantly get people to join under you so that the retention rate stays level. So if you have, if you start out really hard worker and you get a whole bunch of people in, to maintain that income you're earning, you need to constantly get people in because constantly there's an outflow of people leaving, okay? So it is, a, it is not, a passive income business however it is different in terms of you know you earn money while you're sleeping sometimes because you know people are still paying their monthly bills when you're sleeping okay so that is one of the offline businesses that is kind of to me a hybrid of active and passive business models okay so now let's move on to the online passive income okay so online passive income I know a lot about because I actually now work online full-time actively every single day and every time I see a sales page that says earn passive income online or you know we have you know this super easy method to earn 400 while you sleep all this kind of stuff the truth is that passive online income just doesn't exist 
okay? There is no strategy out there that you're just going to set something up online and all of a sudden you're just gonna start making a whole bunch of money passively and you're gonna sleep and you're gonna go to work the next day and come home that night, you're gonna have a whole bunch of money coming out. It just doesn't work that way, okay? You're basically, if you're, if you're moving from an active job and you have an active job and you think that you're just gonna come into the online business and start, you know, um, working less then that's not the truth okay and then I know this firsthand because this is actually what I do I work online every day I work about 40 to 50 hours a week making money online but I work from my house and I do this you know and I know that over time as I put in this effort this active effort that yes there is going to be money at the end of the day when I stop doing this I am going to start continuing to earn money constantly okay but it is a constant effort to get to that point and every single day there's more and more people online competing to get more content out there okay so to say online marketing is passive is is just wrong but there are some ways to earn passively online and I'm going to talk about those right now okay Okay, so each one of these has a different level of passivity, we'll say. Let's just see if that's actually a word, passivity. Okay, so it wasn't a word, I checked. It's actually, it is a word, but it's not what I meant. But anyway, what I'm talking about is how much activity each of these things online requires in order to maintain that income. So let's talk about some of the ways to make passive income online. So the first one is peer-to-peer -peer lending, okay? So there are companies out there that allow you to go online, you can sign up, and you can start lending money and earning back roughly, you know, six to eight percent on that cash. So again, one of those things that requires you to have cash capital, and you have to be willing to lend it out and get that back. Now, that's a big risk, obviously. It's a risk that you, if you, if you wanna take that risk, that's fine, you're gonna earn more than your 2.5% on your general savings which is extremely safe but you're you know you're taking the risk of maybe not getting paid back so there are companies out there just google it you know what are peer-to-peer -peer lending sites and, and that's a way to earn money passively online number two one that goes around that I see a lot is ebooks writing an ebook okay um, this involves you obviously having knowledge in a particular niche, something that is interesting to people, that is helpful, that is very engaging. And you know, you write this ebook, you type it up, and then you convert it to PDF, and then you protect it somehow online. Now, there's software out there like A Member that allows you to, you know, you buy it one time, it's like a $600 software or 500 bucks, I think, and maybe even less. Um, anyway, and you can put your ebook in there and you can set up the payment platform like Stripe or PayPal, or you can even connect it to Amazon and all this kind of stuff. And once you have it in there, then you need to obviously market it and tell people, look, I have this book. And then the more copies you sell, uh, the more marketing you do, the more uh, people will buy it. So obviously the active piece of this is that you have to write the book, you have to know how to set it up online, and you have to know how to market your book, and you have to set up marketing. Now, some of the marketing online can be passive, but in order to get traffic, you have to create either a bunch of content or you have to buy ads. And now ads will run while you're sleeping, yes, of course, but you're not gonna be just setting up an ad and letting it run for you know 60 days and then coming back and looking at the results, okay? Every day you wanna look at your ads, make sure your marketing is working to sell your ebook, okay? So that is not really passive income. It's still a, one of those things that you know people say is passive, writing an ebook, and then all of a sudden, you know, places like Amazon are just gonna sell your book. Well, there's so many millions of people that are putting books on Amazon that you're not just gonna be able to put a book on there and just it's just gonna start selling, okay? You need to market it, and that's where the active stuff comes in, okay? So people can market and do other things. So I'm gonna talk about more about marketing here in a second, but that was you know one of those common ones. The next one, number three, is creating a course online, okay? So, you know, setting up a course, again, involves the same exact setup as setting up your ebook, except now you're creating a long, longer course structure. Maybe you can drip feed it so that, you know, for one week you get this, for week two you get this, week three, and then you, you progress it over a certain amount of time. People sign up through the same system like A Member or another platform that's designed specifically for courses. Um, there's a whole bunch out there. There's WordPress. WordPress 
WordPress plugins that actually work to you know deliver your content in course structure and then you can charge a price again with PayPal, Stripe, or even using a credit card processor and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can sell your course even on Udemy, which is a, a site that actually takes other people's courses and sells them out to other people and you can make a commission off that, okay? So that is one way and they have a ton of traffic. If you have a niche or a topic that isn't really already beaten to death, um, you could probably actually get in there and actually earn passive income just by taking the effort and time up front to build your course and then put it on to Udemy and you know do a little bit of marketing. But again, that platform is big and you can get a lot of traffic from there. However, it's not Per, uh, perfectly passive again you're gonna be every day you're gonna be going in there probably updating your course all the time dealing with clients and customers if you want to keep them happy answering their questions and all that kind of stuff so again a lot of work but it can be extra money earned and it could potentially replace one of your active incomes later so number four involves you know maybe you have a particular skill or you have some music you have some art you have some crafts whatever it is again you're creating this stuff and you're selling it online, okay? You can use Shopify, which is a tool that you can set up. It's, you know, 60 bucks a month, I think, or anywhere. It's, anyways, it's less than 100 bucks a month to join Shopify and you can set it up. They have all the payment systems in place. They have the delivery options available so you can deliver stuff easily. All this stuff, you can, you can take clients from around the world and if they see and like your art, your music, your whatever it is, um, your CD or whatever, do people even use CDs anymore? I doubt it, but whatever. Whatever it is you have in your house that you think you can make and develop for people, you can sell as a product, okay? So this again, not passive. People pitch it as a passive business opportunity it is not passive you have to create um, in you know your products but it's a way to again you know move from the super active to a more passive strategy because people are going to be coming to your site and ordering and you can set it up all automatically so that there's not a lot of effort involved in terms of you know sending the order and all that kind of stuff so the, the platforms themselves take a lot of the work out of what you would normally have to actively do um, in terms of earning that income. So that is one, uh, another idea, number four, okay? Number five is a little more passive because it involves creating an app or a software program, okay? So once you've created that, um, usually it, it, it doesn't require a lot of updates. I mean, obviously it does at first, if you're just creating a brand new app, brand new software, there's gonna be a lot of updating. You need to obviously understand how to do this. Hire somebody if you don't understand, but if you have a great idea for an app, there are developers out there. My phone's ringing. I'm gonna have to decline that, okay. So software is a great one. I think uh, if you can sell it again through the same platforms I described earlier, which is Amember, you can sell a software program through there, give people access. There's people that do that online. Uh, for example, uh, marketing uh, programs like uh, even spy tools like Adplexity is one of those things. It's like a software. It's a you know, you, you log in, you get access to spy on your competitors' ads and all that stuff. They built it through a platform called Amember. Well, they built the software and then you can get access to that software by going through their Amember system that they purchased and they're earning kind of passive income because this, this platform just kind of scrapes content constantly and, and just adds it to their, their platform. So they're making money by people subscribing to a recurring membership to get access to the software. And once they get more and more members in and the software continues to work, it is basically, you know, go to sleep, wake up the next morning and you have hundreds or thousands of dollars in your bank because that's just working on autopilot, technically, okay? Autopilot is still one of those words that's kind of tossed around too much, but in that case, it's more closer to autopilot than some of the other ones I've described. Okay, number six is content marketing. Okay, now this one is big. This one is pitched a lot, um, especially, you know, when people on YouTube like myself, okay? So like you're saying, okay, yeah, but Joey, you're actually sitting here making videos and you're sitting in front of camera, you're at your desk. Obviously this isn't passive, right? Uh, this is not passive income at first. However, the more and more videos I create that are related to a subject that people are interested in listening to, the more money I will make later um, once you hit more subscribers. But I'm not doing this for YouTube money. Uh, I'm doing it to build a, you know, a brand and building traffic to another website, okay? So um, you also, you know, 
you can do content marketing not just through YouTube. You can do it. You can do it through Google. Um, so you're doing search engine marketing. So you're actually building content around a property that you've built online. So instead of building a real estate property offline, you're building a property, a digital property online. You're giving people value, okay? You have to give people value so people come to your website and then you monetize your website, okay? Um, this, again, is, is a strategy where you're building content so that later you just get free traffic coming to your websites all the time from the search engines, okay? Now, this is not a passive income strategy because you're constantly creating new content. The minute you stop creating content, um, your, your numbers start to, the graphs that you see of making money start to go down, okay? It's just the way it is. There's just so many people creating content online that if you're not constantly doing it, like I spend four or five hours a week doing just videos for YouTube, okay? Four hours a week, um, but I, I enjoy it. I like doing these videos or else I wouldn't be doing it, right? Um, and I also enjoy creating, uh, you know, content online and sharing it with people to help them. So it's, it's whether you like the niche you're in and you like to do it, um, it's not something that's going to make me rich. I understand that. It's just one of those things that makes income while I'm doing other things. So the four hours a week I spend creating these videos, they'll always be there online, unless of course YouTube changes their whole policy and then all of a sudden you just can't post videos anymore. But that would be ludicrous because they earn all of their income by people going there and watching videos, okay? So you need to choose your platforms properly when you're doing content marketing. Make sure you understand how quickly these companies come and go. If you're doing all of your content around a platform like, let's say, remember MySpace, people that would build all these big massive followings on these social networks and then all of a sudden they're gone, you did all that work for nothing. Well, I th I'm confident enough that YouTube will be here long enough, uh, Google will be here long enough for me to create all of this content that's going out there and eventually, um, you know, I can sit back and do a lot less content, you know, spend maybe an hour a week um, doing a short video um, or, you know, hiring somebody to just throw an extra article on my blog every, you know, few days, whatever, and it'll just constantly be, you know, the search engines will still like me, okay? So the, if, as long as you continue adding content, the search engines will reward you, okay? Um, especially if you do proper keyword research, all that kind of stuff. I have videos, check up here, I think somewhere, there's a video about, you know, search engine optimization and making sure you work with companies that are going to be here forever. Choose evergreen topics, evergreen niches, evergreen meaning like they're gonna last forever. People will always wanna talk about passive income, how to make passive income online, offline. So this video is relevant, it will be relevant in five years from now. Maybe a couple of services I mentioned like Shopify might not be here, but Google I'm sure will still be here, okay? So that was number six. The last one, this one really angers me when I see the gurus out there. Number seven, okay, gurus everywhere saying affiliate marketing is passive income. Affiliate marketing is not passive income. And I don't care, there's people out there talking about, well just pitch the subscriptions and so that it's, you know, you're building a subscription and you're getting paid recurring money, residual money, all this stuff. Okay, autopilot, doesn't work. Affiliate marketing, if you want to make a lot of money with affiliate marketing, you need to be engaged every day, okay? The people that make the most money from affiliate marketing, the actual people that are doing affiliate marketing, not the people selling you uh, courses out there that are, you know, $997, like $997 for content that is, you know, pretty much already out there. Um, they are, they're not making money doing affiliate marketing, okay? Affiliate marketing and anyone that's telling you that it's autopilot is, is just kind of not telling you the truth, okay? So basically what I mean by this, let me get to the point, okay? Is the biggest affiliates I meet, like Affiliate World, Affiliate Summits, um, you know, Affiliate World Asia, all that kind of stuff, the, the people that buy traffic, okay? These people know how to go into Facebook, set up ads, they know how to buy native ads, they know how to buy search ads. So they're buying traffic 
converting that traffic into commissions. Now commissions actually are an active type of income, okay? They are not passive income. When you earn commissions, just check it out, go to the IRS, look up commissions. It's a type of active income because you are getting paid to work and getting commissions by selling other people's stuff, okay? In order to buy traffic online, you cannot just set up an ad well, you, you can set up an ad and you can go to sleep and then you can wake up and you can make a lot of money while you're sleeping. But again, you can also lose a lot of money while you're sleeping. When you're buying traffic online, the numbers are you're very tight. You need to understand how to optimize scale. You need to know how to you know, change your landing page. You're constantly testing landing pages. You're constantly testing ads, constantly testing angles. You're always working. If you have paid traffic running and you wanna scale it, then you probably need to hire somebody to help you as well so that you can have a bunch of ads to test and scale as you're building your budget up higher, okay? Now, again, you can make a whole bunch of money fast, but it's what you do with that money after these paid traffic campaigns that can turn your business into a passive income, okay? So most, most of my time is not spent doing YouTube videos and doing blog posts. Most of my time is spent, as soon as I'm done this video, I'll probably go get a coffee and then I'll go and check in on my traffic stats on all the campaigns that I'm actually paying to buy and run traffic to, okay? That is the truth about affiliate marketing. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, you know, affiliate marketing is this passive business. It's not. You have to, if you, if you really wanna make money, you need to understand how to do media buying. Media buying is not passive. You are going in, you're doing research, you're constantly looking at what your audience wants, all that kind of stuff, okay? Now, there are case studies, there's actual live trainings of me going in and showing you exactly those media buying strategies, how to make money, buying traffic, paid traffic, so it's a lot faster traffic. You're not spending years creating content to try and make a few bucks at the end of the day. You're actually going in, you're buying traffic. It's an active, it's an active income, okay? But if that's interesting to you and you want to set up a campaign and learn how to buy traffic from Facebook, native, Bing, Google, all these places that have traffic, massive amounts of traffic that you can scale, then check out powerhouseaffiliate.com. There is a free training in there. And if you like it, then you can actually check out the case studies and all that stuff on different traffic sources. You can engage directly with me, ask me about that. That is the part of my business that is active. It is not passive, okay? That's why I ended this video on that because affiliate marketing is not passive in that sense. The only passive part about it that you'll see being pitched is when people are trying to pitch you a software program that is just going to suck money out of the internet or they're trying to pitch you a build this blog and you're gonna make a whole bunch of money. People will come to your website. No, no, that's not how it works, okay? You need to actually create a whole bunch of content, do a ton of research, and then maybe later on, people will start to find your site. Google will like you now that you're creating long-term content. Your aged domain is starting to show signs of life. Now you're gonna make some money from all those efforts that you put in. So hopefully that clears up a little bit about passive versus active income or what is residual, it is not passive. But the point is here, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe. I have lots of videos like this. There's other videos that you're gonna see pop up here in a few seconds that might interest you. And if you did like it, please comment, share, all that kind of stuff, and we'll see you in the next videos.